All right, peace, y'all. Welcome uh, to my YouTube channel, and uh, I want to thank those of you who have been uh, subscribers for a little bit, and because this YouTube channel has kind of uh, been something I haven't really focused on, uh, I'm kind of ashamed to admit, but I'm going to try to repair that uh, in this upcoming uh, year for sure, and uh, hopefully build from there. And uh, so, uh, just uh, my name's Nikki Two Shoes. So, if you if you've not been here to this channel, and uh, thank you for uh, stopping by. Uh, some of you are coming because you know who I really am, and my uh, my real name is Neil. Nikki is kind of a band nickname. So, uh, part of like what I'm going to talk about on this channel is going to be dealing with you know things related to bands and music. You know, and obviously the piano because I do play the piano a little bit and have uh, played most of my life. And uh, But the other aspect of uh, what this channel is going to be about is about uh, what it's like being a musician. You know, and I'm an old musician, you know. And I've been playing, you know, professionally pretty much all, uh, you know, over 40 years. So uh, on and off, okay. But I, I, I've had a career, uh, other, uh, not just in music. So I uh, um, actually, I have a, a, a doctorate in uh, instructional technology, and I've been a programmer, and uh, I've, I've been a teacher. I actually started out in education as an elementary school teacher, and uh, yeah, but that, that was during the time pr right prior to the internet, but the internet was just starting to happen, not internet, the World Wide Web was just starting to happen back in the 90s, and I had a proclivity uh, somehow to... Uh, Desktop publishing, PowerPoint was just coming out. I was doing some stuff, and this is like 93, 94. I got the IT uh, just a little bit while I was teaching, designing web pages because I was incorporating technology into uh, my instruction with my students, you know, trying to incorporate, you know, as much as we can or could at that time. We had dialect and we had internet in the media center, but uh, things changed, and I became the first uh, webmaster. I don't like that term really. So I was, but uh, that was my my title, webmaster at the time, and I was also a, tr a technology trainer for for teachers to teach them how to incorporate kind of technology into you know uh, what they were doing. But I was also designing websites, and I did that for several years. And so eventually, so I kind of ended up in uh, working in, in what was called then adult and technical education. I became a webmaster and then a trainer what was called the Georgia Virtual Technical College, but kind of rose through the ranks. I had uh, been uh, you know, continuing my education and got a master's degree in, in, uh, in, in instructional technology because that was a hot thing back in the late 90s. Still is, right? You know? And this is kind of an uh, offshoot of, of kind of what I have learned. You know, this is obviously going to be focused on a lot of music. Because I, you know, this is what I've been really passionate about. That is, is music. But I'm also an IT guy, and I, you know, I've been and been fair, fairly passionate about media and the creation. And I've, this was one of the things that I've really loved about being a content creator. And uh, that I haven't got to that point yet, and talking about where where I'm coming from in that regard. But yes, yeah, so uh, uh, in, in terms of you know, when I was working with the technical college system doing some website design and stuff like that. I became more involved in, 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 in uh, it's still, you know, education, academia, you know, and I was kind of rising up. And so I, I became kind of a director of academic services, but this was an online education. So, and it was still early days, you know, and I helping teachers put their content online and how to teach and pedagogy behind that and how to be effective and, you know, uh, how to incorporate media into and you know not just it wasn't just a sit and get kind of a component but uh you know how to make instruction engaging and so there was a media component to that and so as part of this is kind of still like i said it's offshooter it's kind of just branching out because i have been creating instructional content videos for courses that i've been teaching for decades okay and i've uh you know i, I had a couple of careers in between but i'm currently now so i ended up finally getting a doctorate degree from georgia state university very proud uh, alumni from that fine institution in Atlanta, uh, but uh, I've worked a little bit as you know as a technology director. You know that was more the you know the, you know stuff goes down. You know you get the call at three in the morning. Hey, I can't access my email. Right. You know uh, 
that wasn't so fun. But I, I do enjoy the media development component. So, but right now, uh, you know, like over 10 years ago, I, I, I kind of transitioned. I'm a, I'm a professor. Uh, still, and still, that's like I have a I have a day gig, and I and, and that's being a professor of IT, and I do a lot of media kind of courses. Okay, uh, I, I I'm very fortunate in my department to be that. You know, I'm kind of the social. I'm one of the social media guys, and I'm also one of the instructional media folks, and I teach classes in instructional design, content development. So this is kind of an offshoot of that as well. But because uh, you know, a couple of years ago, right, you know, we. Not just a you know a couple of years ago this is you know it's going on five or so now uh, you know with COVID when that happened and you know how the world changed right and how we all became more tied into screens and sharing content and I and I did not I still had you know, have not really told you a little bit about my music because I was still doing music this whole entire time while I was advancing in this other career so I also had this you know my it's a it's a passion I have a passion for for playing the piano, and it's a, and I really like jazz music, and uh, I, I, that's why I kind of started playing jazz in high school, and then I became in the 80s, before I went back to college, I was playing in a kind of a rock band in Macon, Georgia, so I'm, I'm actually from Macon, so a lot of the components that you'll hear on this channel will be about music of Macon, Georgia, and Macon does have a rich historical musical legacy. And so I'm very proud of that. I don't live in Macon right now, but I still work in Macon. That's where our university is. So that'll be a component of this channel as well. But uh, yeah, I, I played around in the Macon music scene for a few years and uh, kind of quit playing there for a little bit, but then got back in the 90s. I got back into, uh, uh, I was actually DJing a little bit for a little while, but then, uh, and this is while I was working uh, as a teacher and as a, an instructional technologist and moving up. And I, I started uh, late 90s, got back involved with uh, playing with uh, some local friends who were involved with the uh, Jazz Association of Macon. And uh, it was, uh, and there was an educational component to that. Uh, and, and we go out and started in 99, I got, got involved with this Jazz Association group. I'm currently the president of the Jazz Association of Macon, very proud of that, and work with a very, uh, talented and dedicated group of uh, wonderful musicians and non-musicians, just folks who love jazz and just want to be able to uh, be able to spread what we call spread the gospel of jazz. And so I've been involved with that organization as a part-time thing. And uh, here on the side, while I've also been, and so we go out and we, we go out and we do what we call a jam goes back to school was our initial title of this, but it's, we, we have a, kind of a core group of musicians we were called the jam ambassadors and we were going out to schools primarily in bibb county where macon is located uh, macon and bibb county but we also do the surrounding counties uh, and uh, <clears throat> we'll go out and do a program to talk about the history of jazz and being a very unique american art form and <clears throat> so that's been something i've been doing kind of on the part-time thing too still continue to this day and so that was along the way of you know, me becoming a professor, you know, which I, I've been doing that now, <coughs> excuse me, for, uh, I've been doing that now for a little over 10 years. So yeah, I've been, uh, I've been doing the more academic professor thing now for a little over 10 years. Uh, you know, I've served my time in different roles as a, in, in, as a director and been, I was also department chair for a little while, but now I'm, I'm really just focused on, I'm able to focus on some teaching, uh, which is exciting. I'm doing an instructional design class at the moment, which I really love. And it's, it's, it's primarily online. So uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, a component <coughs> about that I really don't talk about in some of the social media uh, that I've been doing. And so that's another aspect of what this channel is, is going to be about, is that uh, for the past a little over two years now, I've been creating content and I, I needed content. I wanted to, you know, I, I mentioned COVID and how that changed, you know, everyone, right? Everybody, you know, changed us all. But I did not get onto the short form video bandwagon and I now TikTok, right? TikTok it was the, is in still is, you know, very uh, controversial, but very popular amongst especially younger folk. Uh, but I, I got on late. I got on TikTok a couple, almost two years, a little over two years ago, right? 
And I'm not a viral TikTok star by far, by far. But one thing that I did not uh, expect to find on TikTok was just the, 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 uh, the community. You know, brought me into the TikTok uh, realm of uh, advocacy was the ability to do, to do duets. And that was just, you know, it's a musical thing. TikTok, you know, and I've been doing, you know, because my, I just mentioned, all right, so I'm also a professor. And I think there's a component of my job as part of research. So some of what I've been doing is really research related. So TikTok, you know, is very controversial because it is owned by an adversary, not just owned, but, you know, it is uh, uh, a you know, a company, although it's the, the American version differs from the Chinese version, but, you know, Byte Dance and uh, I think it was Dowin, uh, it started out, you know, as, it, was, it was really for dancing, you know, it, so it's built on music, right? So TikTok really was, so all the, you know, the, the TikTok challenges, that came later, but it was, TikTok was it, it, essentially at first, you know, and still is very much a, a music-oriented platform. And so it was a great place for musicians to come and be able to play cover songs and get away with a little bit more with cover songs because of the licensing that TikTok was able to acquire. So I've been creating, we'll get into all of this much more later. Uh, but, uh, into a greater detail, and I'll have a whole series, hopefully, just on the, the whole TikTok creation component, you know. But I needed content, you know. And so uh, one of the things is, uh, I, I didn't mention, you know, is I'm also still a part of, and you know, so after being a part of this jazz association, I had a, some friends who had been playing in a band. And this was a, it's a, it's a Macon-based band that played all over Georgia. It's a, uh, Kind of a party band called the Grapevine Band played a lot of 60s, 70s, 80s music. That's basically just party music playing, and and so they do a lot of corporate, you know, events. They need the keyboard player in the in the or 2000s. So I've been been with this band for about <clears throat> about 20 years now, and so stuff, you know, that's going to be a component of what I, I I hope to share with you guys is how to find joy in music even when it's not how you're earning your your daily bread right you know and uh so you 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 still can and and how also to to not you know come down on yourself or not to value your your worth as a musician because it's not your main source of income all right it's okay to have another career we all wear different hats i'm very interested in part of my dissertation is, was, has been on identity development and a part of what i've been in enjoying as as I have evolved in my identity as Nikki here on the you know because you know obviously when I come into a classroom I'm not always quite maybe the same as you may see me on TikTok right you know we have these different identities so that's one of the reasons why I utilize the uh, the the my uh, nickname Nikki Two Shoes you know that's kind of the kind of you know it's kind of an identity of itself. You know, when I'm Dr. Neil Rigoli, that's a separate identity. When I'm involved in, I'm uh, covering, I'm working on a committee or, you know, writing a paper or something. That's a whole different identity. And, and so how you balance <coughs> those, uh, uh, that'll be a component and hopefully a topic uh, later as well. But yeah, so uh, now that I've uh, been creating that content for the past couple of years, you know, it's, like, it, it's really, it started with TikTok and then it moved over to Facebook because... TikTok, as I mentioned, is very controversial. You know, we it's been banned now in Georgia. As mentioned, I, I work in Macon. You know, we can't access it on the state network in Georgia. The governor, you know, banned it on state devices. I'm on my home network. I'm on my own personal device now. And so, you know, there are, and I work with a lot of individuals who are experts in cybersecurity. I, you know, I understand there are risks, but I believe there are risks in, in all the platforms that we engage in. And so we have to... You know, uh, for better or worse, uh, you know, pick the ones that are going to best fit the uh, the need that we have at the moment, right? And uh, that it may maybe not be the it may be and, and you know some of this what I want may, just for example, okay, we have a uh, uh, you know TikTok obviously was winning, <laughs> you know, in terms of uh, user adoption, yeah, but. 
more and more people were jumping on that platform. So you, people started jumping off of the Instagram, Facebook. They started seeing their, you know, their lines either not continue to grow as dramatically because they had competition. So some of this is related to the competitive nature. But you know, you know part of the reasons why I jumped over to Facebook, Instagram now is because you know they both had started promoting short form video uh, like uh, TikTok videos with their Instagram reels and Facebook reels and also now YouTube uh, YouTube shorts um, and I've tried that so that was where this channel was at first and kind of still is at the, you know at this point in time was that you know this was going to be a focus just for me to be able to focus, promote in a different platform out on the YouTube has a much broader audience obviously uh, but to be able to because YouTube was promoting the shorts and uh, I was putting out some content primarily cover songs okay and there's, a, you know, you know, it, it does, there's some trickiness to covering songs, you know, and, and, and a lot of that's related to copyright and, and ensuring, and that's another good thing about YouTube is that they have uh, great ways of being able to, the algorithms figure out, all right, this is copyrighted material, and then we can share in the monetization, you know, or, you know, they can mute if they don't want to mute, you know, it, it could, it'll let you know. Right. And it generally it's okay. And I think what most artists have figured out is that, yeah, it's better to, you know, Hey, I'm getting exposure. I'm getting you know, someone, you know, uh, is, uh, appreciative of my work and I can also continue to earn a little bit. It's better than, you know, there are other artists who are totally different and they like to just shut people down. And I've had a few strikes on, uh, uh, TikTok for covering, uh, Eagle songs, and I was not very happy with Mr. Henley after that. I uh, I very much understand now uh, why the dude feels the way he he felt, and, and that's happened to a lot of folks here on on YouTube as well. Because after it happened to me, I started doing a little research of you know about what not to do. But uh, great, and I really love Rick Beato, and I, you know, he's a hero in a lot of ways. Uh, but I, I have learned so much from watching his channel and continue to. I mean, he's still out there, a great posting every day. Not every day, yeah, but as often as he can. But he always has great interviews and, and great uh, you know, insight into the music industry as it is today, right? But he ha also has had issues. He does a lot of, you know, what makes a song great. So, so you know, some of what I will be doing when I do cover songs is I, I I'll try to educate. I, I'm an educator. I try to bring in a little bit of the music's history, maybe a, an interesting fact about the song. For example, I found out I, I, I had covered a song by a local band. They were back in the 70s, 80s, called it the Atlanta Rhythm Section. They were very popular across the United States, around the world, several big hits. But there was this one weird fact that if you sped up one of their songs from 33 RPMs to 45 RPMs, the lead singer sounded exactly like Stevie Nicks and Stevie Nicks really thought you know it sounded like her as well and, and took the song to Fleetwood Mac anyway so what's the connection between the Atlanta rhythm sections imaginary lover and Stevie Nicks you're about to find out that's the kind of stuff I, I try to incorporate you know kind of an educational component and even when doing that you know to get a strike you know like when Rick would do what makes a song great and then you know certain guys would you know, say, no, they would put a strike on your account. So let's hope that doesn't happen. And so I'll I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just my experience over the years from, you know, that kind of, you know, knowledge base, you know, and, and, and also the, some of the tools that I've been using, what keyboards I play live and in here that I've been using to record some of the equipment. I, had, I don't really have a home studio. I've been doing most of my recordings on the phone. All of my editing is on the phone a lot of times, but I do have access to, uh, to Logic. And uh, I do, uh, do use Logic Pro to, uh, to a certain extent to be able to play tracks through and also um, to make modifications, you know. And I've, and I've learned some, some tricks, you know. I've learned some, some, some really cool things that, that, the, that the young people out there have been doing for the past couple of years. And uh, some of that I can share as well. And some of that is, some of it's AI related. So some of the tricks, like I, I love playing along with tracks that I'm able to separate out. So I use a, an app called Moises. There are other things 
the, the later version uh, now of, of Logic, I believe, has this built in to where you can, you know, separate tracks that weren't separate. When, you know, it was, uh, and this is, you know, to me, that's almost, man, that's, you know, it's magic that you're able to do that. If you could do that with voices next, that would be amazing to be able to separate vocal tracks in harmonies. Not there yet, but I just today did, you know, a song and it had a rhythm guitar track and a lead guitar track and it separated them amazingly, you know. And so, you know, I'll talk a little bit about that kind of stuff and AI and its impact, you know, and also what I've been learning about, you know, home recording just the easy way, you know, with uh, with some of the video. Uh, and it's, you know, I, I'm a big cap cut fan. I, I taught Adobe stuff for years and, uh, you know, Photoshop. Premiere, Final, I mean, After Effects, you know. But I know a little bit about Final Cut, but Cap Cut, it's amazing. I do everything on the phone that I, that, that computers still struggle with uh, just because of, of, of processing. And uh, video takes up a lot of, a lot of memory in, in processing, you know. So, uh, you know, because we now have these powerful devices in our, in our pockets, these uh, become really great editing devices for media. Right, and so that'll be a component, hopefully, of this channel as well. So yeah, so if you uh, subscribe, hopefully, like and subscribe, you'll you'll get some cover songs here and also some original music. So I've been working on some original music. I've posted, you know, half a dozen or so original songs the past couple of years. These will eventually wind wind up on and there. There are a couple already out on Spotify. More and more will wind up out there. Okay, that's part of this you know learning process too of what I've been learning. Uh, logic is to be able to eventually uh, release my own music. And I've been doing this independently, obviously, right? So uh, I have some tips on that uh, that I've also learned and, you know, and we'll continue to share uh, those kind of ideas. So uh, covers and new music, but also tips and tricks about uh, posting uh, video content in short form and using applications like CapCut and uh, how to... Uh, do some best practices kind of in, uh, in, in some of what I've been able to find in CapCut, you know, to create music videos or, you know, videos for TikTok reels, you know, or reels, you know, that, that'll be a component uh, of this as well. But I, another component will be, you know, like I said, how, you know, being a gigging musician, you know, and, and not, I don't want to call myself a part-time musician, although that's what it says on my taxes, right? Yeah, I have to file about the income that I make as a musician. But, you know, if you're a musician, you're a musician. It doesn't matter. And, you know, and I'm a professor. I'm also a professor, right? And then it's, a, it's, it's not one or the other. I'm always a musician, but I'm also always a professor. I can put, it's not, you know, you do put hats on sometimes, right? But what's it like, whatever your day gig is, you know, you're still a musician and how to find and that balance, okay? And, and I still struggle with that, you know, just ask my, my family and my wife, you know. Uh, finding that balance between your day, you know, day gig and your family life and, you know, your musical goals and aspirations and your passion, right? Because music to, mo to, uh, to many folks is a, is a passion, right? It's something that I, I found early that I had, you know, and just a, you know, always been interested in various genres of music. So you'll hear cover songs from me when I do covers. You'll hear not only some of the oldies like I play with in the grapevine, but also, you know, some jazz songs. Here's, you know, some jazz players would hate me to say this, but, you know, most of the jazz bands I've played in over the years are cover bands, right? Because we're covering songs of the greats, but we try to make them our own. And that's what I, one of the things I also try to do with uh, the cover songs I do. Uh, but I'll try to cover some new songs. So I'm also crazy about some new artists, right? So I'm always listening to new groups. So I'll share with you about new artists that I found and their music, hopefully trying to uh, cover a song or two uh, and not embarrass myself too much. And, uh, but also try to promote uh, these new artists, especially new independent artists. And some of these are going to be my TikTok friends right, that are out there, new independent artists who are you know, hitting it, you know, also working other gigs, doing other things on the side, but also, or full time, but also out there uh, trying to make it, make it, whatever that means, but also making music, right? And uh, sharing that with the world. And the, the ones that I found of interest, I'll try to share those with you as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, and then 
you know, uh, you know, some of um, like the gear, you know, and kind of things that I use here. Like I said, uh, uh, we'll look at some of the things, you know, what we use when I play in some of the bands, you know, and, and some of that kind of a musical aspect and also just topics related to music and uh, in general. So uh, you guys, thank you again. If, you, if you're new here, please like and subscribe. Look at that bell ring, right? And, you know, I appreciate you taking the opportunity and to, to learn a little bit about Nikki, Neil, Two Shoes. I, I, I'm just going to shut up now. So again, thank you for tuning in. That's just a little bit about the channel, what I hope to create and make from this opportunity. So we'll see you next time. All right, bye for now.